Hey what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today in this video I want to talk to you about the reasons why people are not using Firefox. This is by no mean scientifically proof or scientifically accurate, it's just something that um, I decided to do because I was inspired by the video that Nick, the Linux experiment, did about why Firefox is important, why Firefox must survive, and I strongly recommend you to check that video out. Anyway, what I did, I basically sent a tweet yesterday by just simply asking a very generic question. Why are you folks not using Firefox? This is not a provocation or an attack, I'm legit curious about what makes Chrome or Chromium better for you, with specific examples or website or web technology working better there. Please avoid the is just faster argument. And I was kind of expecting a lot of trolls or a lot of silly answers or stupid answers, but other than one users saying that I was a troll for asking that question for whatever reason, the majority or almost every single answer was very very insightful. So as I said this is not a scientifically accurate method but I went through all the tweets or the replies that right now is of today is of the recording of this video we are around 217 replies to the tweet so probably later is gonna be more but I went through all of those and I collected the most common answers, like the most uh, common issues that users are experiencing with Firefox and it's forcing them to not use Firefox as their daily driver. So let's get started. One recurring issue was the no PWA support or I should say the full support for PWA, which can be explained as a web application that can be used and launched as it was a desktop application. You simply save that website into a containerized window of your browser and then you launch that containerized window of your browser as it was a standalone application without needing to launch your browser. Chrome works very well with these out of the box. You can save the website, you can assign a custom icon, you can save it in your dock, in your launcher or whatever you want and then when you launch it, it just triggers that application without needing to launch the browser itself. Firefox kind of works that way, it's capable of doing it but it needs an extra extension, it's an add-on to complete match that capability that Chrome has. So out of the box Firefox is lacking that feature that apparently many users want and many users need. Another recurring issue is the missing or the lack of a clear separation between profiles. So Chrome has a very nice feature where you can have multiple profiles, multiple completely different and separated disconnected profiles with also different colors and different uh, icons, whatever, to distinguish them all. But those profiles will open separated containerized windows that don't interact with each other, at least apparently on the surface, uh, where you can have completely different accounts, different Facebook accounts, your different email accounts, and keep all those separate. So it, a clear example, you have your home profile or your personal profile, and then your work profile, your business profile, and whatever. Firefox has something similar, which are called containers. You can have these containers, customize these containers, and assign specific websites to these containers. When a website goes from one container to another, it loses everything, all the cookies, all the saved password, uh, all the data is not shared between containers, so you can have a work container with your work email and work uh, whatever, social media, and then you can have a personal container with all the extra things. I personally use containers, but I can see how that type of UI and especially the UX of containers is not as good as the Chrome profiles where you they're pretty much out of the box, very easy to use and you can customize to fit your needs. Also in this case, Firefox, the same like Mozilla developers, they offer an add-on to enhance the capabilities and functionalities of the containers, but out of the box, also in this case, Firefox is lacking a little bit behind Chrome. Another pretty glaring issue that I wasn't surprised to hear is that Chrome works better with Google related products. Of course, YouTube, the entire Google Drive, G Suite, uh, the Hangouts, or yeah, they're still called Hangouts. I don't know, they keep changing name once a week. And even that screen sharing and video conferencing through Google products, it's better on Chrome. Of course, they own those products, so they're optimized for their browsers, but Firefox is capable of 
working properly with those products, but it's lacking some features like blurring background or custom virtual background, sometimes video quality or the overall functionality and usability of those specific websites kind of iffy, is not great. So it's normal that users, especially in a business environment where they need things to work out of the box, they don't need to think about or troubleshooting while doing a video conference, they end up picking Chrome instead of Firefox. And I don't think this is something that it can be easily solved because Chrome will go extra miles to avoid that other browser will work properly with their product. They will do a lot of shitty things in order to ensure the supremacy on that field, which is, it's horrible. Another recurring issue that a lot of you reported is the fact that the settings and in general the user interface of Firefox feels less intuitive, feels less easy to use, even though after you spend a little bit of time in it, it's pretty much the same. You have the settings page, you have your tabs, you have your toolbars, your search bar and all the other things around. As a first impression, as a first glance, the user interface of Firefox feels more complicated for not navigated users, for users that are not well versed with computers or other user interfaces. I don't think this can be solved much because it's mostly a personal preference problem, but definitely in the last few years, Firefox went through a lot of redesigns, which some of those were well received by the community for many, many reasons. And so, uh, yeah, this is a tough one. The last recurring issue, and this is kind of important, but also the trickiest one to address, is the fact that the industry in general, like clients or other web agencies, are not requiring testing or full compatibility with Firefox anymore. They're mostly interested about Chrome, that works on Chrome out of the box, because if it works on Chrome out of the box, it works also perfectly on all other Chromium uh, forks and other uh, browsers like Microsoft, the new Microsoft Edge browser is just Chrome <laughs> with a reskin. They work with the same render engine and Safari, especially iOS and Safari, because of course of the limitation of the uh, iOS platform on mobile. Other than this, there are a lot of multiple other issues that are sometimes very specific to the user situation, sometimes issue with GPU acceleration, sometimes websites that don't work in Chrome work on Firefox and vice versa is just a little bit of a shot in the dark. Like sometimes it's perfect for some users, sometimes some users stumble upon a very, very weird issue. Uh, one thing that came out though is that Firefox as a snap by default in Ubuntu is just the worst shit ever. It's just giving a bad name to Firefox for users that don't know that this, the problem in itself is a snap because to load Firefox via snap for the first time, it can take up to two minutes. You click on the browser Firefox button and you wait two minutes before anything showing up. And this is terrible for Firefox users and Firefox developers because it's giving you, it's giving users a skewed perception of the fact that Firefox is slow and it's resource hogging and it's just terrible. But the issue is actually Snap. So yeah, that's something that like Snap should die in a fire and let's move all to Flatpak and Flathub, but whatever, that's another issue for another video. I decided to stick with Firefox because personally I don't have any technical issue. I never stumble upon any issue with websites or other platforms that I use on the web that required me to use Chrome or Chromium based uh, browser. So I can use only Firefox, entirely always Firefox. Also, of course, I'm a Thunderbird developer. Thunderbird is built on top of Firefox, so I need to use the tools that I built for, otherwise it would be pretty silly. But in general, my decision, even before working for Thunderbird, I decided to use Firefox full time because it came out to the fact that both Chrome and Firefox, they work exactly the same for me. Like I don't have any technical problems. So the, the core of the issue came to which company or which product I actually want to support. And I know Mozilla had his problem, has his problem, the old cryptocurrency shenanigans, sometimes like 
shoving ads inside your search bar or enabling things by default without requiring user permission and all these crappy decisions that are just hurting the product but they're not really a big deal in my opinion I strongly agree with the Mozilla manifesto and I strongly agree with the uh, Mozilla direction and the championing of web standard and open technology and making sure that as Nick said in his video about Firefox making sure that the industry is not monopolized by one giant product that decides where the web is going Having multiple choices and forcing users and forcing developers to support multiple choices, it's good because it gives us options, it gives us freedom and it keeps everyone in check with each other in order to avoid shitty things or someone getting on top and deciding everything for everyone. So I decided to stick with Firefox for all these sort of like ethical reasons, I would say, but yeah, I, I can understand like all the issues that I listed before are real issues and the Firefox developers should actually work on these things and try to directly compete with the most common features that Chrome is using but the main issue is how do you convince the industry how do you regain your foot into the industry how do you make yourself relevant again in order to go over that percentage cap of market share so the industry will consider you valuable and will force clients and will force developers and agencies to actually support you that's very tricky well that's pretty much it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like it please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel as usual uh but yeah that's that's pretty much it and just as a note i'm wearing a shirt because nick was wearing a shirt and when nick wears a shirt you know that things are serious. So let's keep wearing a shirt. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.